Now we're back to real time, and something I don't know if I mentioned before, and if I didn't, it's worth respecifying. And that is your FID temperature here. It's set to 280, so we're in good shape. But you always want to make sure your detector is at least 20 degrees hotter than the final column temperature. We want to make sure there is no condensation in our detector. So we want to avoid that. That's going to eliminate our contamination. So once we're, we're squared away, and we again, we have collected data here, we verify that the data is reproducible. Okay. And then we added the integration parameters to that. We're going to go to real-time batch. Real-time batch here, and this, I can say use my wizard. We're going to make a new batch, and it's going to be using this method here. We're going to say we're going to run standards and unknowns. Next. Now, I'm going to go back a minute here. And you can see here's the method file. And we said standards and unknowns. Now, when I hit next, it knows there's three levels of calibration because it's reading that from the method of what we added to that. So that's good. I like to use create file names automatically. We'll get back to that a little bit later. Also, clear all calibrations at the beginning. If you don't do that, it will possibly retain an old calibration curve. So you want to make sure that's checked. Next, unknown samples. How many unknown samples are we going to be running? Uh, how many are unknown samples in each group? Let's say we're going to run 10. So you can see here it's putting it in vials 4 through 13. You can change these around later. And again, we're using create file names automatically. And if you want to print out reports, we can print out reports too, but we're going to worry about collecting data first. We'll say next. We're not going to worry about summary reports. Next. Uh, we're going to not worry about startup or shutdown methods right now. Next. What's the batch file name going to be? I'm going to get creative and again, December 5, BAT1. And finish. So here's my batch file. It knows that injections one, two, and three are going to be standards. It also here has in the type here that's initialized calibration curve. So you see that I there? That's initialized calibration curve. It knows over here based on the level of the calibrants when it injects each peak to take that area and plot that against a known concentration. Okay. Now, uh, something else here under the batch, if you remember we said batch settings. We specified that the data file names we want to do automatically. So how do I want to name those? I'm going to put sample name here and sample ID add. And I'm going to remove the batch file name, remove. So you can have it's going to be the batch start date followed by the sample name and the sample ID. That is how each of these will be named. Okay. Now, in this instance, maybe I don't want the sample name. Again, you can remove that if you choose to. But try to be consistent. It's going to make things easier in the long run for you to uh, get through things. And then you can see 00102, so it's going to be batch start date, sample ID, 00102 or 0102, whatever you choose to use. Say OK. And again, file, save batch file as, and save. That's going to save the changes. Yes. Now, if you don't want to run the whole batch here, I can just highlight the, say I just want to run 1 through 9 here. And I go back start, and it's going to let you just run 1 through 9, and it'll stop. Because maybe 10, 11, 12, and 13 aren't ready yet. 
and they won't be ready till tomorrow, or that's a different group. So you don't have to run the whole batch at any given time. Uh, so that's how we go about creating a batch and saving the batch and running. Okay. Uh, I think that covers a lot of it. So I'm going to stop. That's batch creation.